This year, the ranks of the world's undernourished are expected to swell to one billion. Here at UC Berkeley, the global food crisis uh, panel discussion aims to address some of the issues surrounding this global problem. We spoke to one of the panelists, agroecologist Miguel Altieri, to learn some more. Why is there still no end in sight to a crisis that has persisted for 50 years? There are many complex reasons why this is happening. First of all, it's important to clarify that the problem of hunger at this point doesn't have anything to do with lack of production. There's enough food in the world, the problem is not being distributed, and the problem is that there's a lot of people that are poor and don't have the income to buy food. More than one billion people live on less than one dollar a day. And there's also a lot of people that don't have access to land to produce the food that they need. You have the problems of uh, oil prices that have gone up and, and that has put a, some constraint on farmers on buying fertilizers and other things they need for production. There is also agrofuels that are being grown, uh, sugarcane, corn, soybean, for biodiesel, for ethanol, for cars. So basically we're growing crops not to feed people but to grow cars, to, to, to food, uh, feed cars. And there are many, many more factors. There's also been much consolidation in the food industry. What role have multinational corporations played? Two corporations like Monsanto and DuPont control 60% of the seeds of corn and soybean. Well, those people have also speculated with food. For example, Cargill, which is one of the big grain merchants, bought the corn in Mexico at 1,600 uh, pesos in, in the year 2006. Then they held it, they created an artificial um, um, scarcity of food and they made a huge profit but then the, the, the food of uh, the cost of uh, the tortillas which is the basic food in Mexico went up and this happens in many other countries like in the Philippines. What about arguments that farm mechanization and economies of scale raise efficiency? They are more efficient for example in the United States a lot of people say yeah uh, we can produce the food that we need in this country and feed the world uh, that's one model that some people think that this is the way to go, it's more efficient. But the question is for how long and at what cost? Because this large-scale agriculture is going to actually uh, collapse with climate change because they have no ecological mechanisms to regulate and to be resilient. You see, because they're in monocultures and it, it, if, if the drought comes, everything dies. Whereas if you look at a small farm in, the, in a developing country where farmers have a lot of different crops growing together in mixed cropping, then maybe a drought will not affect all the crops and, and, and they will be much more resilient. So it depends on how you measure productivity. If you measure productivity only production per area, a large scale farm can produce much more corn, that's, that's for sure. But if you, if you now say, well, when, now we're gonna constrain it in terms of water availability and I want to measure the productivity in terms of hectares, tons per hectare per centimeters of water, then the local farms, the, the local varieties are much more efficient than the large scale system. Now that the G20 has officially supplanted the G8 as the world's top economic forum, are you optimistic that more action will be taken? You know, the donors, the ones that give the most money, like the United States that put 25% of the budget, are the ones that control the agenda. The same thing in the World Bank. There's many countries that are members of the World Bank. The United States put 25% of the budget, they control the agenda. So basically, uh, the more people you bring in, great, but if they don't have the same power, the same vote, then I don't think that uh, things are going to change too much. And I don't think that the solutions are going to come from the G20 or from some top-down institutions like World Bank. The, 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 the solutions to the problems are going to come from the grassroots up. That's it for uh, this week's edition of In Focus. Stay tuned for next week's edition when we'll be back with more great interviews. For CalTV, I'm Joe Lynn.